Hello. Uh, if you're new to my channel, my name is Autumn. I am the owner of Autumn Acres Mini Pet Pigs. I have had pigs, pet pigs, in the house for 18 years. I have learned a lot over those 18 years. And so my passion now is helping pig families to be successful. Pigs are not an easy pet. And when you don't understand how they think, it's even more difficult. So what I try to do is I try to share the knowledge that I've learned over the last 18 years so that you can be successful. A question that I get a lot is, you know, a lot of people get piglets from people who don't socialize those piglets. So the piglets are absolutely petrified and people need help figuring out how to socialize them. Now the, it can be done. You can take an absolutely petrified piglet and turn it into a piglet that loves people and loves to be in the house. But how can you do that? So first let's talk about why a piglet feels this way and is so afraid. So most breeders, backyard breeders, you know, just people who have piglets on their farm, um, they have their adult pigs outside um, in the barn. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a pig's natural habitat. So there's nothing wrong with it. The problem comes in when you have a piglet that's raised outside in a barn and the only time they ever see or interact with people is when they're being fed. So pigs are smart and they put that together really quickly. So the only time they see people is when they're being fed. And so in their mind, what do they think? Okay, every time I see a person, then I get food. So that right there, causes a little bit of an issue when you bring a pig in the house and they see you all the time, then to them, every time they see you, they should be getting food. So it, it tends to cause them to be screamers and really bad squealers and um, worse. Like I have had, oh, I, this happened to me many times and it causes the pig to like ram the crate to like flop around and just be so angry that every time they see you, you're not feeding them. So that's one thing that happens. Another thing that happens is that when pigs are raised outside in a barn, you know, a barn in general is pretty quiet. Um, they get used to the noises out there. So if there are other animals or other pigs or a farmer with his tractor, whatever it is, they're used to those noises. But when you bring a piglet in the house that has been raised outside in a barn, <laughs> that again is petrifying because people are noisy. We talk loud. We have the TV on. That's loud. Commercials are loud. Music. Um, if you have kids like I do, they're running in and out slamming doors, running up and down stairs, yelling, laughing, talking. People are loud. <laughs> so when you have a piglet that's not used to that, um, coming in the house is terrifying. Again, if they were really not interacted with, not handled very much at all, then they don't understand the change. They don't understand the difference in being outside and inside. All they know is that it's different and it's scary. And pigs are afraid of anything that's different. We have to remember that pigs are prey animals. So when it comes to being, when it comes to something different, they're, they're afraid of it. That's perfectly normal. So when we do this, we get a piglet from somebody and it was raised this way. And then we bring it in our home and we want to love it. <laughs> we just desperately want to love this little pig and cuddle it. Um, it doesn't go over well. Pigs are prey. All the change, all the noise. Um, 
the smells, remember pigs have a very strong sense of smell and they follow their nose to, they try, they depend on their nose to tell them if they know you, if they don't know you. And when, when you bring a pig in your house, it's just all kinds of different for them. So you're going to have some behaviors that are difficult to deal with biting, um, even screaming and squealing, um, ramming of things like the, the, if you have them in a crate or you have them in a gated off area, you know, here's another thing too. So in most barns, there are stalls or maybe they're in a room where, you know, they can't see through the walls. And then you take a pig that's been raised there and you put them in a crate that is see-through. They don't understand. And they're not used to having people legs walking towards them. They don't see us until, you know, we're up here. They're not used to seeing our feet at their level. And it's, it's terrifying for them. They tend to freak out. They tend to panic. They're jumping all over the place. They're trying to escape because remember, Pigs don't have that many ways to protect themselves when they're afraid of something. So they're going to use their voice. They're going to squeal. They're going to scream. They're going to cry. And they're just going to try to be crazy, do anything they can to escape. So that's going to be like bucking again, jumping up and hitting the top of the crate, just doing anything they can. And it's, it's scary for people to see that because we don't want to see our sweet little baby that we just brought home panicking and that terrified. So what can we do? How do we handle this situation? Number one, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of patience. So don't force your new piglet to let you hold them, to let you touch them, to cuddle with you and bringing them all over the house. A new piglet needs an area of their own. They need um, a nice big crate with a litter box and a bed or um, a small area gated off. It could be uh, a closet you're not using. It could be your laundry room, which I'm not a huge fan of just because, you know, you have to be careful with laundry detergents. Um, nowhere where there's a kitty litter box. We don't want our pig eating kitty litter and getting a blockage and having to have surgery or passing away. So be real careful of that. Know where you keep dog or cat food. Remember, both of those are not good for pigs because of the salt uh, in them, not good for pigs. Um, so it could really be anywhere in your home that you can set aside for your pig. It should be secure because pigs can jump. We had pigs jump. We had a whole litter of six piglets jump over a baby gate when they were, I don't know, five or six weeks old found their way to our homeschool room, ate a box of crayons and pooped confetti for a week. Good thing they're non-toxic. They didn't get hurt, but they could have. I had no idea that they could jump over a baby gate. So my point is make sure that it's secure. Pigs are very strong. Their snout is very strong. If they can get under a baby gate, they can probably knock it off the wall if it's not screwed in. So be very careful when it comes to that. time. <laughs> it's going to take time. So the best thing to do to really reach a pig and really, I guess the point is what you need to do is you need to build a bond with your new piglet. They don't know you. They don't trust you. They don't know if you're going to hurt them or not. So they act accordingly. Our job is to get them to understand that we are not scary that we are not going to hurt them. They are going to be safe with us. So what does that take? That takes calm. Pigs are drawn to people in the family who are more calm. So the more calm and quiet you can be when you're in their presence, when you're sitting with them, the better. They'll be more drawn to you. That trust will be built more quickly. Um. So what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to go sit, say they have a, a big crate, um, or if they 
just if they have a room or a closet or whatever, can you go in there and can you just sit on the floor? Do not park yourself right next to them. Sit away from them. Give them space. Let them know that you're not going to be right in their face every time you're with them. Give them that space. Just go sit in their area. Quietly and calmly. And then what you're going to want to do is a way to a pig's heart is through their stomach. <laughs> so get some Cheerios and do whatever you have to do. Sprinkle them around you. Fight the urge and temptation to reach out and touch them, especially in the beginning. Give them time. Give them time to learn your scent. Give them time to learn your voice. Give them time to adjust to these new surroundings. Sprinkle Cheerios around you. Um, Another thing you can do is if they're in a crate, you can actually feed them their meals one pellet at a time through the fence. You can even just toss it into them one at a time if they won't come near you. Once they will come near you, then feed them. Now, remember, I always talk about this. It's very easy to, to accidentally teach a pig to become a biter. And that's by always having food in our hands because they're like, oh, people food. Oh, 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 excuse me, people hands. Oh, they should have food in them. So it's important that if you're going to feed your pig from your hands, that you also know how to correct them. And they learn fast, buddy. They don't like it. So here's a real quick lesson. This is a pig snout. If they bite you, whether it's on purpose or not, it doesn't matter. Then what you're going to want to do is be really, really fast and whoop, grab their snout. Now, depending on how hard a pig has bit me is kind of how I gauge how hard to do it. Just simply going boop, that's not enough. That's not enough motivation for a pig not to bite again. So you need to give them motivation. Now, this does not hurt them. Basically, what you're doing is you're holding their mouth shut and they don't like it because remember, they're prey animals and they don't like to be controlled. So you are going to grab their snout and maybe even a little bit of a push backwards, like you are in control. They are not in control. You are in control. So when you do that, they're smart enough to say, okay, I bit her. She grabbed my snout and pushed me backwards. I hate that feeling. So I'm never going to bite. Now it takes a few times, but they learn, they're fast learners, really fast learners. And it will save you because a piglet that bites hurts. A pig that bites can break the skin and bust you open, baby. So don't wait. Don't wait to correct biting. Do it while they're young. And I get the message all the time from people. Oh, I can't catch her. She's too fast for me. I can't be, you need to be fast. You need to know this is something you have to do. You have to correct them and you can't be afraid. You have a pig in your home now. Your job is to, this is a family member. It's not an option to just get rid of this pig if it doesn't work out. Your job is to make sure that it works out. So this is what we're doing. We're socializing this little piglet. We are correcting bad behavior and that includes biting. And here's the thing about the biting. So biting is very common, especially with pigs who were raised outside and not taught from a younger age that biting is wrong. The correction does not hurt them. The correction is motivating because they hate it. So it's also something that you're not going to have to do forever. Once they learn it, then I, I, my pig, she's four now and she was a terrible biter. She bit my son right here on the arm. Oh my gosh. She had a huge bruise. And then the next day she bit him on the ribs. Whew, she got him so good. I mean, it was really bruised and it was broken open. So like, you have to nip that in the bud. You don't, you don't want your kids being afraid of your pig. I don't want to be afraid of my pig. So now to this day, I mean, I'm on it, man. I'm like a drill sergeant when it comes to my pigs. I always win. Always. It doesn't matter what is going on. I always, always, always win. It's my way or the highway. And if you can be that way, oh my gosh, you can have such an amazing relationship with your pig and they make such amazing pets. Now, like I said, Topanga now, that's my pig's name. She won't even bite me. If I put my hand in her mouth, she'll like, oh, 
Like she doesn't, she will just try to get away from it. She doesn't want to bite me because she knows that she'll be corrected. Again, the correction doesn't hurt them, but you have to learn to be fast enough to grab a hold of that snout. So that means being ready. Always anticipate that they're going to bite you. That way you're ready. And you know what? If you're afraid of getting bitten, you have to understand pigs are smart and they will bite if they know you're afraid because they want to push you around and they want to be the boss. So if you're afraid, this is something that I do with my kids, then they put gloves on because if you put gloves on, it it doesn't hurt as bad. And it's it's like a protection. It's like a, you know, it like gives you confidence. So a lot of times if I have a piglet that I'm training that's a really bad biter, I will put gloves on and I'll kind of bait them. So like these two spots right here on a pig are blind spots. And these spots are just basically instinct that if something is here, what do I do? I bite. I bite. So be careful putting your fingers here. Now, it's when I when I'm kind of baiting a pig to try to teach them not to bite, then this is what I'll do. I'll take my glove and I do this right here. And so it causes them to bite. And then I then will correct. So you can hold on to them while you do it. Just be careful. And you might want to wait a little while until they are a little more used to you. But right from the beginning, like if, if they bite, they're corrected. And I don't care if I have to walk through fire to correct that pig, I will do it. So that's how determined you need to be. We want this to be successful. So be determined and also make sure your kids know how to correct. Because if your kids don't know how to correct, then they'll start biting the kids. It's important that everybody is on the same page and everybody's doing the correcting that needs done. So sit on the floor in their area, sprinkle food around you, feed them their meals one pellet at a time so that they know the food comes through you. Ignore any squealing. Do not respond. Do not respond to squealing. Remember, pigs are smart. So if they squeal and you respond by giving them a treat, what do they think? They think that every time they squeal, they should be getting a treat. Whereas if they squeal and freak out and panic and no one pays any attention to them, no one says anything to them. And then when they're calm, you go over and you sit near them and you sprinkle treats on the floor or you give them their meals through the crate wall, they're going to learn that when I'm calm, that's called positive reinforcement. I have a podcast episode coming out in October, um, first Tuesday in October about positive reinforcement and the magic words that I use when training my pigs. It's a good one for you if this is a topic, if if you have a piglet like this that needs help with the training and needs help building trust and needs help with bonding. Patience and time are what it's going to take. Do not force your brand new piglet who's terrified of you to put a harness and a leash on and walk around at a picnic for all your friends to see. Don't do that. Don't do that to your piglet and don't do that to yourself. You will be embarrassed. Your pig will probably bite somebody. Your pig will be even more petrified. So before you try to do anything that's like really um, even more scary for them, like give a bath. Baths are scary, especially for pigs raised in a barn that have never had one before. Taking them places, having a whole bunch of people over for them to see, these are not things that you want to do until your pig trusts you. And, and I get it. Like I do. You have this new pig and you want to show it off. And I, I get that. I really do. But remember that you're trying, you're trying to build a bond with a living creature that needs you, that you want to have a good relationship with. This is a forever pet. So share all the pictures, share all the videos that you can, that you want to. 
on your social media with your family. But if you're going to have people over to see your piglet, don't force your piglet to interact with them and make sure that the people are calm and quiet. If you do that, then you're much more likely to have a piglet that's going to trust you as it grows to be older. On Mighty Networks, I have my own community. This community is a community of pig owners and pig lovers, and it's a kind community. There is no like rudeness or judgmental behavior tolerated. Consider joining because it's free, it's free to join, but I like to keep it a closed community because then I can control who comes in and who comes out. Um, also, um, on Mighty Networks, I have courses and I have an educational membership group where I teach about pigs in more detail than you could probably imagine. I have a couple of courses. One is called Preparing for a New Piglet Course. Not a bad idea for you to snatch it. It costs $25. Um, the reason that it's so cheap is that I want everyone to be able to afford it. Everyone who has a new piglet should watch this course, should have this course. I also just released my signature course, which is not a cheap course um, because it is literally a compilation of everything that I have learned about having pet pigs in the last 18 years. There are 48 lessons. There are videos, articles, you name it. The subject is covered there. You can check it out on Mighty Networks if you're interested. And of course, I have free resources also here on my YouTube channel. I also have a podcast called The Pet Pig Podcast. I release two episodes a month. One is a solo episode where I just talk about a subject. Um, the other one is an interview with a pig owner, pig lover, pig expert, pig vet, something from all over the country. It's really fun to get to meet all these people. So if you're looking for more free pig resources, then that's a great one. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please share it with your pig loving friends and I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.